Good Fortune, God's Hidden Secrets to Boost Your Revenue Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Just as Joseph of the ancient scriptures was propelled to success in times of scarcity, good fortune prepares you to flourish in any economic environment. It's a study of timeless biblical principles re-envisioned for the current financial landscape, providing you with a special mix of spiritual insight and actionable tactics to raise your income. Picture revealing prosperity mysteries that have endured through the ages, prepared to be implemented in your financial life. Let's set off on this adventure together. Before we begin, I'd like to appeal to those who still need to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, like, and share the video. God bless you as you do this. Also, check the video description for more information and resources. Thanks. Chapter 1. God's Plan for Your Prosperity Understanding God's plan for your prosperity requires a careful and faith-based analysis of biblical principles and their practical application in your life. It's not just about reading the scriptures, it's about applying them in a way that aligns with His plan. God's desire for your prosperity isn't limited to financial wealth, but expands to a wholeness that includes health, relationships, and spiritual growth. You've got to remember, prosperity in God's domain is more than just material wealth. It's about living a life that's enriched in all aspects, from your personal growth to your relationships with others. Don't limit your perspective to a worldly understanding of prosperity. Let's shift the lens to a broader view, one that encompasses a holistic understanding of prosperity in God's terms. Here's where innovation comes into play. You're not just going to repeat the same patterns and expect different results. It's time to dig deeper, to seek innovative ways of applying God's principles to your everyday life. It's about seeing things from a different angle, being creative in your approach to prosperity. Think about it this way, God's plan for your prosperity isn't a blueprint that's one size fits all. It's tailored to you, to your gifts, your circumstances, and your calling. It's not just about what you can get, but also about what you can give. God's plan for your prosperity, therefore, isn't just about receiving, but also about contributing to the prosperity of others. So, let's start innovating, let's start applying, and most importantly, let's start prospering. Chapter 2. Discovering the Biblical Foundations of Wealth Now that we've explored God's holistic view of prosperity, Let's shift our focus and begin unraveling the biblical foundations of wealth. You've probably heard the saying, money is the root of all evil, but that's a misquote. In fact, the Bible states, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. It's not the money itself, but the unhealthy attachment to it, which can lead us astray. Understanding this vital distinction is the first step in grasping the Bible's perspective on wealth. God doesn't condemn wealth, but warns against greed. He encourages us to be good stewards of the resources He provides, Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. This stewardship implies both responsibility and innovation in managing God's gifts. God also affirms the concept of work and its reward. Proverbs 14 verse 23 says, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. From a biblical standpoint, wealth is a byproduct of diligent labor and smart decision making. Lastly, God emphasizes generosity. In 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 8, we're taught that the one who gives generously will also reap generously. It's not about hoarding wealth, but about using it as a tool to bless others. The biblical foundations of wealth, then, are built on principles of wise stewardship, hard work, and generosity. These principles aren't just about money management, they offer a holistic perspective on wealth that aligns with God's purpose for our lives. And that's the kind of wealth worth pursuing. Chapter 3. Unpacking the Parables of Provision Delving into the parables of provision, you'll find layers of wisdom that shed light on God's promise of provision and our part in it. These parables aren't just ancient tales, they're innovative strategies for modern-day prosperity. Take, for instance, the parable of the talents. 
Here, servants are entrusted with varying amounts of money. Two invest wisely and double their money, while one, out of fear, buries his talent. You're shown the essence of stewardship, managing resources with wisdom and courage. It's not just about what you're given, but what you do with it. Let's also consider the parable of the sower. The seeds represent God's word and the different soils, our hearts. Those planted in good soil generate a bountiful harvest. Here, you're taught about receptivity and productivity. Your heart's condition determines how you receive and maximize God's provision. Finally, reflect on the parable of the prodigal son. Despite squandering his inheritance, the wayward son is welcomed back with a feast. This parable assures you of God's abundant grace and unfailing provision, even after mistakes. Unpacking these parables, you'll see they're not just about material wealth, but also spiritual richness. They invite you to be a responsible, productive, and gracious steward of God's provision. They inspire you to innovate, to take calculated risks, and to trust in God's boundless provision. Chapter 4 Applying Scriptural Principles to Finances When it comes to managing your finances, incorporating scriptural principles sets the stage for both material abundance and spiritual prosperity. The Bible isn't simply a spiritual guide, it's a practical tool brimming with wisdom, particularly on financial matters. To start, acknowledge that everything belongs to God, Psalm 24 verse 1. This mindset shifts your perspective from ownership to stewardship. You're not just managing your wealth, you're handling God's resources. It's a call to prudence, accountability, and generosity. Next, consider the principle of sowing and reaping, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. When you invest wisely and generously, you're setting yourself up for a bountiful harvest. This isn't just about monetary investments, but also investing in relationships, knowledge, and skills. Then, there's the principle of contentment, Philippians 4 verses 12 to 13. It's not about having what you want, but wanting what you have. Contentment doesn't hinder ambition, it provides a solid foundation for growth. It prevents reckless financial decisions driven by envy or discontent. Lastly, the principle of seeking God's kingdom first, Matthew 6 verse 33, is pivotal. When your priorities align with God's, you're not just securing your finances, you're investing in eternal riches. Applying these scriptural principles doesn't guarantee instant wealth, but it does promise a more fulfilling, prosperous life. It's about aligning your financial decisions with God's wisdom, fostering an attitude of stewardship, generosity, contentment, and prioritizing God's kingdom. It's innovative because it's countercultural, challenging conventional views on wealth. It's a journey of faith and prudence, and it's a journey worth taking. Chapter 5 Overcoming Debt Through Faith Based Strategies Just as you've learned to apply scriptural principles to your finances, it's equally important to use faith based strategies to overcome the burden of debt. God's Word serves as an innovative tool, providing us with guidance on how to manage and clear debt, leading us to a prosperous life. Firstly, you're required to acknowledge the problem. Proverbs 22 verse 7 states, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Understand that debt isn't a position that God desires for you. It's a form of bondage that you're meant to break free from. Next, commit to stop borrowing. Romans 13 verse 8 commands, Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. It's a clear sign to cease creating more debt while you work on clearing existing ones. Then, formulate a plan. Use Luke 14 verse 28, which advises us to calculate the cost before building a tower, as a metaphor for your strategy. Identify your debts, create a budget, and establish a debt repayment plan. Lastly, trust in God's provision. Philippians 4 verse 19 assures us, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Your faith in God's provision is a key step towards financial freedom. 
remember, it's not just about your efforts, but about God's grace and providence. Through these steps, you'll be applying faith-based strategies to overcome your debt. This journey requires faith, wisdom, and discipline, but remember, with God, all things are possible. Chapter 6 Cultivating a Mindset of Abundance Moving forward, you need to cultivate a mindset of abundance, firmly believing in God's promise in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that He plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This isn't just about adopting a positive thinking pattern, it's about deeply ingraining faith and optimism in your consciousness and recognizing God's limitless bounty. First, understand that having an abundance mindset doesn't equate to a love of money. Your focus isn't on the material wealth itself, but on the possibilities and opportunities it can provide. It's about adopting a perspective that sees beyond the current circumstance, envisioning a future where you're not just surviving, but thriving. Secondly, being grateful for what you have, no matter how small, is a key step in creating an abundance mindset. Gratitude helps you appreciate God's blessings and opens your eyes to the abundant life He wants for you. This isn't about complacency, but acknowledging your blessings while still aspiring for more. Lastly, remember that abundance isn't limited to financial wealth. It extends to other aspects of life like relationships, health, and spiritual growth. It's about the totality of God's blessings, not just monetary wealth. Chapter 7 Aligning Your Finances with Godly Wisdom In your journey towards financial prosperity, aligning your financial decisions with godly wisdom is crucial, allowing His principles to guide your monetary actions and choices. This isn't just about being moral or ethical, it involves understanding and adopting the divine financial strategies outlined in the Bible. God's financial system is distinct from the world's. His system is founded on principles of stewardship, generosity, integrity, and trust. It's not solely about how much you earn or how much you save, it's about how you manage what you've been entrusted with. In Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10, it's stated, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the firstfruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. This scripture clearly underlines the importance of managing our finances wisely and with gratitude. The key to aligning your finances with godly wisdom is to study His Word and seek His guidance in all your financial decisions. This entails being disciplined in your spending, saving responsibly, avoiding unnecessary debt, and being generous in giving. It is not always easy to follow these principles, particularly in a world that values rapid satisfaction and materialism. But remember, God's ways are higher than ours. His principles may seem counterintuitive at first, but they always lead to true prosperity and financial stability. Chapter 8 Unlocking the Secrets of Tithing Delving into the concept of tithing, it's pivotal to understand that this age-old practice is more than just a religious duty, it's a divine key to accessing financial blessings and prosperity. At its core, tithing is about cultivating a spirit of generosity and gratitude. It's about acknowledging God's provision in your life and responding with a willing heart. Now, you might be wondering how tithing can open the door to financial prosperity. After all, it seems counterintuitive to give away a portion of your income if you're aiming to increase your wealth. However, the Bible reveals an innovative perspective on this matter. In Malachi 3 verse 10, God challenges us to test him by bringing the whole tithe into the storehouse. In return, he promises to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. This isn't just a promise of material wealth, but of an overflow of God's blessings in every area of your life. Tithing is an act of faith that demonstrates your trust in God's provision. It's an investment in God's kingdom that yields eternal dividends. It's a divine principle that, when practiced consistently, can shift your financial trajectory and bring forth unimaginable blessings. Chapter 9 Investing in Eternal Treasures While tithing is a powerful tool for financial prosperity, it's equally important to realize the value of investing in eternal treasures. 
The Bible doesn't just offer advice on financial matters, it also provides guidance on how to invest in things that will last forever. Now, you might be wondering, what are these eternal treasures? They're investments into the kingdom of God. These investments could be your time, talents, or even resources spent in the service of God and humanity. You're not just making an investment for a temporal gain, but for an eternal reward. Consider Matthew 6 verses 19 to 20, which says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin don't destroy, and where thieves don't break in and steal. When you invest in eternal treasures, you're placing your resources into something that transcends time and space. It is about moving your perspective from the temporal to the eternal, from the fleeting to the immortal. The key here is to start viewing your resources as tools for God's kingdom. This requires a mindset shift, from viewing wealth solely as a means for personal gain to seeing it as a tool for advancing God's work. In doing so, you're not just securing your financial future, but you're also laying up treasures in heaven. That's the ultimate form of investment, one that offers both temporal and eternal returns. Chapter 10 Managing Resources with Godly Stewardship To manage your resources with godly stewardship, grasping the fact that everything you own is actually God's property and you're simply a steward is crucial. This perspective changes everything, shifting your mindset from one of ownership to one of management. You're not just handling your own funds, you're overseeing God's assets. Let's delve deeper into the Bible for guidance. Proverbs 27 verse 23 advises, Be sure you know the condition of your flocks, give careful attention to your herds. This suggests a detailed, hands-on approach to managing resources. It means being intentional, prudent, and responsible with each penny entrusted to you. It's not about accumulating wealth for its own sake, but about stewarding it wisely for the kingdom of God. Recall the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. The faithful servants were those who took their master's assets, invested them wisely, and generated a return. They didn't hoard or squander, they multiplied. That's the core of godly stewardship. Lastly, don't overlook seeking God's wisdom in your financial decisions. James 1 verse 5 promises, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Commence each day by seeking His guidance in managing His resources. Chapter 11 Leveraging Spiritual Gifts for Prosperity Harnessing your spiritual gifts can open a pathway to prosperity, allowing you to thrive in both your personal and spiritual life. You've been blessed with these unique gifts from God, and it's integral to your success to utilize them effectively. Embracing your spiritual gifts isn't just about personal development, it's about aligning with God's plan for your prosperity. Spiritual gifts such as wisdom, discernment, and faith aren't just for church services, they're tools for your financial growth. For example, wisdom can guide you in making prudent investments, discernment can help you avoid risky ventures, and faith can keep you hopeful in times of financial uncertainty. You can innovate by applying these gifts to your business strategies. Wisdom could mean researching market trends before launching a product. Discernment might be recognizing when it's time to diversify your income streams. Faith can be the confidence to take calculated risks for potential high returns. However, it's not enough to possess these gifts, you must activate them. This involves consistent prayer, meditation, and spiritual growth. As you grow closer to God, these gifts will become more potent. Remember, these spiritual gifts aren't magic tricks. They require you to work hand in hand with God, to be diligent and patient. True prosperity isn't instant, it's a journey. And it's by leveraging your spiritual gifts, in alignment with God's will, that you'll find the path to financial success. Next time, we'll explore releasing financial blessings through prayer. But for now, start identifying and activating your spiritual gifts for prosperity. Chapter 12 
releasing financial blessings through prayer. Now that you're actively employing your spiritual gifts for prosperity, let's explore how prayer can serve as a powerful conduit for releasing financial blessings. Essentially, prayer is the lifeline that connects us to our divine source of provision. It's not about begging or bartering with God, it's about aligning our desires with His divine will. There's a strong biblical reference for financial blessings through prayer. Philippians 4 verse 19 assures us, My God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This promise, however, isn't a blank check. God's provision is intertwined with your faithful stewardship, wise management, and generous giving. Harness the power of specific prayers for financial blessings. Be precise about your needs, yet remain open to God's wisdom. James 1 verse 5 encourages us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Remember, God's wisdom often guides us to unexpected solutions. To maximize the effectiveness of your prayers, you must believe in God's ability to provide. Mark 11 verse 24 admonishes us, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This requires a shift from scarcity thinking to a mindset of abundance. Chapter 13 Developing a Healthy Relationship with Money In the quest for financial abundance, developing a healthy relationship with money isn't just desirable, but it's extremely important. Viewing money as a tool rather than a master allows you to align your financial objectives with God's plan for your prosperity. This perspective helps you to handle your finances prudently, without succumbing to greed or fear. It's vital to understand that money in and of itself isn't evil, rather, it's the love of money that leads to wrongdoing, as 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 reminds us. By respecting money as a means to serve God and others, you're ensuring that your financial growth aligns with biblical principles. Consider the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. God rewards those who use their resources wisely and productively. So, avoid hoarding money out of fear or spending recklessly out of greed. Instead, invest wisely, give generously, and save prudently. Chapter 14 Conquering Fear and Worry About Finances Overcoming your fear and worry about finances can seem challenging, but remember, God doesn't want you to live in fear or anxiety about your financial situation. He wants you to trust in His provision and His perfect timing. It's understandable that you may worry about money, but it's essential to remember that worry doesn't solve anything. In fact, it can hinder your ability to think clearly and make wise financial decisions. One innovative approach to conquering fear and worry about finances is to change your perspective. Instead of perceiving money as a cause of stress, consider it a tool that God has given you to use wisely. This shift in perspective can alleviate fear and worry, as it places your focus on stewardship rather than scarcity. Another smart strategy is to create a financial plan. Having a clear plan can provide a sense of control, which can reduce fear and worry. This doesn't mean you'll have all the answers, but it does mean you're taking proactive steps to improve your financial situation. Lastly, don't hesitate to seek advice. There's no shame in asking for help. Consult a financial advisor or a trusted mentor. They can provide guidance and perspective that can help alleviate your financial fears. Chapter 15 Embracing the Prosperity Promises in Scripture Turning to Scripture, you'll find numerous promises of prosperity that can profoundly reshape your understanding and attitude towards wealth. God's Word isn't an antiquated book, but a dynamic, living guide filled with divine wisdom. When you embrace and apply these divine promises, you create the framework for a prosperous life. For instance, Proverbs 10 verse 22 states, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, without painful toil for it. This is a clear demonstration of God's intent for your financial well-being. He doesn't want you to struggle or toil, He wants you to be blessed and prosperous. This promise, however, hinges on your obedience and faithfulness to God's principles. In Malachi 3 verse 10, 
God challenges you to test him by being faithful in tithes and offerings. The Reward It is said that Jesus will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. This is a powerful promise of abundance. However, it requires stepping out in faith, trusting God's word, and acting obediently. Lastly, consider Philippians 4 verse 19, where Paul assures us that God will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This promise reassures you that your financial security doesn't lie in your efforts alone, but in God's inexhaustible provision. Chapter 16 Avoiding the Pitfalls of Greed and Materialism Traversing the treacherous waters of greed and materialism requires a firm grip on your values and a profound understanding of the true source of prosperity. The pursuit of wealth isn't inherently evil. However, when it becomes an obsession that overshadows your moral compass and respect for others, it's a sign you've fallen into the trap of greed and materialism. Remember, God's idea of prosperity goes beyond accumulating material wealth. It encompasses your spiritual, emotional, and relational well-being, too. As Proverbs 15 verse 16 states, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and turmoil with it. You mustn't let your desire for financial success cloud your judgment or compromise your spiritual integrity. Adopting a balanced perspective towards wealth is essential. The Bible doesn't condemn wealth but warns against the love of money, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. It's the attitude towards wealth that matters. Cherish your blessings, but don't let them define you. Avoid the pitfalls of greed by practicing gratitude. It helps you appreciate what you have and reduces the urge to always want more. Be content but not complacent. There's a delicate balance between being satisfied with what God has provided and striving for improvement. Materialism, on the other hand, is a deceptive foe. It promises happiness but delivers emptiness. Instead of relying on earthly stuff, true contentment is derived from a deep and meaningful connection with God. Focus on building a robust spiritual life. It's the surest way to enjoy lasting prosperity and avoid the pitfalls of greed and materialism. Chapter 17 Discovering Your Unique Financial Calling While steering clear of greed and materialism is essential, it's equally important to identify and embrace your unique financial calling. This calling is God's blueprint for your economic life, it's your personal assignment in the field of wealth creation and management. Just like your spiritual gifts, it's exclusive to you and serves a specific purpose in God's kingdom. Discovering your financial calling involves an in-depth exploration into your talents, passions, and experiences. You've got to assess your abilities honestly and identify what you're genuinely good at. It's not about what you want to do, but what you're designed to do. This assessment isn't a one-time event, but a constant process of self-evaluation and adjustment. Consider the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. Each servant was given resources according to their abilities. The two who used their resources wisely were rewarded, but the one who buried his talent out of fear was rebuked. It's a clear indicator that God expects us to utilize our abilities, including our financial skills, to their full potential. Chapter 18 Implementing Biblical Principles of Generosity In your financial journey, embracing the biblical principles of generosity is a pivotal step towards achieving abundant prosperity. This isn't just about giving more, it's a holistic change of mindset, seeing wealth as a tool for good, rather than a goal in itself. You're not just accumulating wealth, you're stewarding it. The Bible, in Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25, provides a profound insight, one person gives freely, yet gains even more, another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This scripture underscores the counterintuitive, yet transformative principle of generosity. The act of giving doesn't deplete you, instead, it enriches you. To implement this, start by reviewing your financial habits. Are you a cheerful giver? Do you allocate a part of your earnings for giving? 
remember, it's not about the size of your gift, but the heart behind it. God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. So, give freely, and watch your resources multiply. Next, identify causes and projects that align with your passions and values. This will inspire your giving and make it a joyful, fulfilling experience rather than a burdensome duty. Chapter 19 Overcoming the Strongholds of Financial Bondage Now, let's dig deeper and tackle the strongholds of financial bondage, a critical obstacle that's been hindering your journey towards abundant prosperity. You're probably wondering what these strongholds are. These are mindsets and habits that limit your financial growth, having roots in fear, lack of knowledge, or past experiences. They're more than just roadblocks, they're like fortresses that need a decisive, strategic approach to overcome. Firstly, identify these financial strongholds. They're often hidden, subtly influencing your decisions and actions. Is it a fear of taking risks? The belief that you don't deserve prosperity? Or perhaps, it's an unhealthy attachment to money? Whatever they are, acknowledging them is a critical first step. Next, confront these strongholds with faith. Remember, faith isn't blind optimism but a confident assurance based on God's promises. Hebrews 11 verse 1 states, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. Use this faith to challenge these limiting beliefs and replace them with God's promises of abundance. Lastly, be persistent. Overcoming financial strongholds won't happen overnight. It's a journey marked by consistent prayer, biblical wisdom, and prudent action. You'll need to continually renew your mind, aligning your thoughts and actions with God's Word. This process isn't a magic formula, but a transformative journey. As you overcome these strongholds, you'll find that you're not just gaining financial freedom, but also growing in faith and character. Chapter 20 Activating the Power of Thanksgiving in Finances Having shattered the stronghold of financial bondage, let's activate a powerful tool on your financial journey, Thanksgiving. You might be wondering, what does Thanksgiving have to do with my finances? Quite a lot, actually. The Bible, in Philippians 4 verse 6, instructs us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and thanksgiving, present our requests to God. This scripture isn't limited to spiritual matters, it extends to all areas of our lives, including our finances. Thanksgiving, in this circumstance, isn't just expressing gratitude for what you've already received. It's an act of faith, acknowledging in advance the blessings that are yet to come. It's a powerful declaration that you trust God's promise to provide for your needs. Activate this power by routinely giving thanks for your financial blessings, both present and future. Recognize and appreciate the resources you currently have, no matter how small. Be grateful for your job, your business, your skills, every source of income. At the same time, thank God in faith for the financial breakthroughs you're yet to experience. Now, this isn't a magical formula that'll make you instantly wealthy. It's a godly principle that paves the way for financial stewardship, contentment, and growth. Remember, God cares about your heart attitude more than the size of your bank account. Cultivating a heart of gratitude not only aligns you with God's promises but also positions you for financial breakthroughs. Chapter 21 Aligning Your Spending with God's Priorities Shifting gears, let's explore how you can better align your spending habits with God's priorities, an essential step towards financial prosperity. This alignment isn't about sacrificing your needs or living in scarcity, it's about making wise and inspired choices that reflect your faith and values. Firstly, understanding God's priorities requires diving into the Bible. Scriptures like Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, highlight the importance of prioritizing God's kingdom over worldly possessions. Hence, your spending should reflect this principle. One innovative way to do this is by investing in kingdom-building activities. 
This doesn't mean you should hand over all your paycheck to the church. Instead, consider how your spending can support causes that align with biblical values. It could be as simple as supporting ethical businesses, or as significant as contributing to charities that help the less fortunate. Additionally, adopt a mindset of stewardship, not ownership. You're managing God's resources, not accruing personal wealth. This perspective shifts your focus from reckless spending to prudent management and fosters an attitude of gratitude for what you have. Lastly, don't neglect the importance of saving and investing wisely. Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. This reminds us to build wealth gradually and honestly. Chapter 22 Trusting God's Provision During Times of Uncertainty In times of uncertainty, it's crucial for you to lean on your faith and trust in God's provision, even when your financial circumstances seem unstable. It's not just about being hopeful but actively believing that God will provide for your needs. This isn't a call to be reckless with your finances, but rather an invitation to trust in God's resourcefulness and timing. This trust isn't about passivity, but engagement. It's about praying for wisdom, seeking godly counsel, and making wise decisions, even when the future seems unclear. It's about innovative strategies, like investing wisely and creating multiple income streams, all the while knowing that it's God who ultimately gives you the power to create wealth, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Confidence in God's provision doesn't mean you'll always have everything you want. But it does mean you'll have what you need. Sometimes, it's through the lean seasons that you learn to depend on God more deeply, recognizing that He's your source. It's in these moments that you can experience a peace that surpasses human understanding, Philippians 4 verse 7. Chapter 23 Cultivating a Heart of Gratitude Towards Wealth Cultivate a heart of gratitude towards wealth, not just as a means for comfort and security, but as a blessing from God that can be used for His purposes. Recognize that wealth isn't merely a tool for self-gratification, it's an opportunity to further God's kingdom in impactful and innovative ways. Your wealth, like all good things, comes from God, James 1 verse 17. It's key to understand this, as it's a shift away from the worldly view of wealth as something to hoard or obsess over. Instead, adopt the mindset that you're a steward of God's resources. This perspective change won't only deepen your faith but also inspire innovative methods of using wealth. Now, how does one cultivate this heart of gratitude? First, acknowledge every financial gain, no matter how small, as a blessing from God. This will help you keep your focus on the giver, not just the gift. Second, always thank God for His provision. This expression of gratitude reaffirms your recognition of His generosity. Then, share your wealth. Be it through tithes, offerings, or helping those in need, giving is a clear demonstration of gratitude. It's an acknowledgement that God is the source of your wealth and you're using it for His glory. To wrap up, cultivating a heart of gratitude towards wealth isn't about ignoring its value but recognizing it as a divine blessing. It's about being grateful, generous, and mindful of its purpose. This will lead to innovative, God-centered strategies for wealth management, and ultimately, a richer life. Chapter 24 Utilizing Spiritual Disciplines to Increase Prosperity Having nurtured a heart of gratitude towards wealth, you're now ready to explore how spiritual disciplines can magnify your prosperity. Just as physical exercise promotes health, spiritual disciplines, when applied with understanding and faith, can stimulate your financial well-being. Firstly, understand the power of giving. Proverbs 11 verse 24 highlights this, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. It's a divine principle that when you give, you receive more. It's not simply about giving money, it could be your time, resources, or skills. But remember, the key here isn't the act of giving itself, but the heart behind it. Secondly, practice contentment. This isn't about complacency or lack of ambition. Rather, it's a peaceful satisfaction with what God has provided, 
paired with a faith-filled expectation for more. Paul says in Philippians 4 verse 12, I know what it's to be in need, and I know what it's to have plenty. Understanding this balance can help you maintain a healthy perspective on wealth. Lastly, commit to integrity. Proverbs 10 verse 9 teaches, Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. In your quest for wealth, don't compromise your values. Integrity may not provide quick riches, but it guarantees lasting prosperity. Chapter 25 Partnering with God for Supernatural Breakthrough You're on the brink of a new journey, partnering with God for a supernatural breakthrough. Let's focus on divine strategies for success and scriptural business principles to reveal this venture. It's about manifesting supernatural abundance and nurturing faith-based revenue growth. While it might seem challenging at first, partnering with God opens doors to an unparalleled level of success and breakthroughs you've never experienced before. It's not just about praying for good fortune, but actively engaging with divine strategies that align your ambitions with God's plan. First, seek divine wisdom. This isn't just about gaining knowledge, but understanding how to apply it successfully in your endeavors. Scripture tells us that God's wisdom is far superior to human understanding, and it's this wisdom that will guide your steps to success. Second, practice patience. When one lives in a culture where instant gratification is the norm, it is simple to become easily disappointed when one does not see results immediately. But remember, God's timing is perfect. His plans may not align with your timeline, but they always lead to the best outcome. Lastly, cultivate a mindset of gratitude. Recognize every blessing, however small, as an affirmation of God's favor. This attitude not only keeps you grounded but also opens up your mind to new opportunities for growth and success. Now that you've embraced divine strategies for success, it's time to explore how scriptural business principles can further strengthen your partnership with God for supernatural breakthroughs. These principles aren't mere beliefs, but practical, spiritual guidelines that can infuse your business with divine wisdom and favor. Consider the principle of integrity, highlighted in Proverbs 11 verse 3, the integrity of the upright guides them. In business, this implies honest dealings, trustworthy relationships, and quality services, which are key to building a sustainable, prosperous venture. Next is the principle of diligence. Proverbs 12 verse 24 states, Diligent hands will rule. This emphasizes the importance of hard work, perseverance, and consistency in achieving business success. Lastly, the principle of generosity, as found in Proverbs 11 verse 25, a generous person will prosper. This encourages giving back, philanthropy, and corporate social responsibility, leading to overall business growth and societal impact. Embracing these principles, you not only align your business with God's will but also create an environment ripe for supernatural breakthroughs. You'll foster innovative growth strategies, infused with God's wisdom, that yield sustainable success. Embracing the divine partnership for supernatural breakthroughs, Grasping how manifesting supernatural abundance can become a reality in your life is essential. It's an innovative perspective, a game-changer that could revolutionize your financial status. But how do you manifest this abundance? It's not a whimsical, haphazard occurrence, but a deliberate, faith-based process. First and foremost, you must cultivate a genuine relationship with God. You're not simply seeking His gifts, but His presence. In this intimate communion, God reveals His principles and promises of abundance to you. Secondly, align your purpose and work with God's kingdom. Your business isn't just about profit, it's a platform for stewardship, for serving others, and for advancing God's kingdom on earth. As you align with His purpose, God promises to bless the work of your hands. Lastly, expect supernatural provision. God isn't confined by the economy or market trends. He owns everything and can provide in miraculous, unexpected ways. So, don't limit God with your expectations. Trust in His ability to do exceedingly, abundantly beyond what you can imagine. 
This divine partnership is your key to manifesting supernatural abundance. Although it may seem challenging at first, you should know that faith-based revenue growth isn't only possible, but it's a divine promise when you partner with God for supernatural breakthrough. This isn't just about increasing your bank balance, it's about manifesting God's kingdom here on earth, through your business. Consider this, your business is a vessel, a tool God can use to bless others. When you align your business with God's plans, and not just your own, you'll see a shift. Your revenue won't just grow, it'll multiply. This isn't a get-rich-quick scheme, it's a divine strategy for sustainable growth. Start by seeking God's wisdom in your business decisions. Consider His Word as your ultimate guide. As Proverbs 3 verse 6 states, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. When you invite God into your business, you're enlisting the ultimate business partner. Next, adopt a mindset of stewardship rather than ownership. All that you have is God's, and you're simply managing it. This paradigm shift can lead to a breakthrough in your revenue growth. Trust in God's promises, and watch as your business and revenue grow. Trust me, this journey of financial abundance is nothing short of miraculous. By aligning your finances with God's plan and applying biblical principles, you're setting the stage for a revenue explosion. It's like opening a treasure chest of blessings. Leverage faith to conquer debt and navigate through uncertainty. Grounded in gratitude and discipline, partner with God for a supernatural breakthrough. Prepare to witness your finances skyrocket beyond your wildest dreams. Now that's divine prosperity. Thanks for listening.